Today on The Boot Guy, we're talking about the Georgia Giant Book with Steel Toe. Seventeen years ago, this was the most comfortable boot that I was selling at the time. Guys were picking these things up left and right. They were talking about it on the job sites, places where guys actually needed a steel toe boot with a really soft sole. The Georgia Giant was reigning king, and for obvious reasons at the time. It was a super soft crepe material sole. We might know it today as blown rubber, but it was a soft sole. It felt great. It was a fully welted boot, so you sat in the middle of the sole. You were comfortable. This rubberized section around the whole boot, around the welting section, this really grabbed a lot of guys' attention because that's where water and oil and stuff was always seeping into the boot. Now, 17 years later, the Georgia Giant has not changed. It's the same exact boot it was then, right down to the green laces and the big brass rivets that are at the front of the boot. Now we've gone through a revolution in work boots. We've gone through this whole idea of building comfortable, amazing work boots. But the Georgia Giant is still out there and guys are still buying it. Mainly because it's still a price point boot. 17 years ago you could pick a pair of these up for about $69.99 and now they're probably up there at $99. So that's not a huge jump in price. So what are the high points about the Georgia Giant? Well, now let's talk about the sole. It's a blown rubber sole. Probably one of my least favorite soles out there. Okay, it is my, it, this is the one sole that comes on work boots that I really do not like mainly because it's not very durable. It wears down quickly. But for a $100 work boot that's super comfortable, I guess a blown rubber sole is gonna be okay. I said the boot is fully welted, so it makes for a more comfortable boot. By no means is it waterproof. It is just leather and sole. But that doesn't mean with a nice couple coats of mink oil or some beeswax or something like that, that you're not gonna repel at least 95% of the water you come in contact with with this boot. Laces, eyelids, speed laces, it's a $100 boot. You're gonna get what you pay for when it comes to these parts on a boot. Now inside the boot, you might be surprised. I am not surprised because it has not changed, but you've got a beautiful, thickly padded tongue. I mean, this thing is pretty thick. This is really gonna take up a lot of space inside there and it's gonna make the boot really comfortable when you lace it down. The collar, they use the same exact padding at the collar and they give you about three quarters of an inch of padding up there. The boot pull is a simple leather boot pull. It's not reinforced, there's nothing going on. If you're using it, if you're getting it sweaty, eventually it's gonna fail. But like I said, it's a $100 boot. Now inside the boot, it's basically just leather until you get to the toe in the vamp section underneath the steel toe, then it's lined with a cotton material. The heel is also reinforced with a little bit of a hard leather cardboard type material back here. Not the most comfortable, not the best. It's gonna be a little tough on the break in, but there is something back there to make this a work boot to make it more durable. Now you guys always know that I like to pull out the insole. Unfortunately, in this Georgia, you cannot pull out the insole. It's a glued down footbed. Kind of like an old pillow cushion. They just glue it in there and it's gonna stay there. Now that doesn't mean that you cannot add an insole to it because Georgia really has made this a very generous fitting boot. There's space inside there. So you could add a nice Spenco insole. I would say you could probably add any insole in there, but you're gonna have to test them out. If you own this boot and you're gonna add insoles to it, just don't go buy insoles. Take the boot with you, wear the boot, Wherever you're going, ask them if you can test the insoles before you buy them inside your boot, just to make sure that you're not pushing yourself against that steel toe. Now with all the boot choices out there in work boots, you're probably wondering, why would anybody go with something like this? Well, this boot ends up on a lot of shoe trucks. This boot ends up on a lot of stipend forms as something that a guy can get with his allowance from the company. Now, mind you, it's a hundred bucks. That's probably the ceiling on most companies' reimbursements for safety shoes. So, of course, most guys are going to go with what they can get for the price. And Georgia Giant, it's not a bad boot. Now, one of the best redeeming qualities about the Georgia Giant is the size scale. They make it in six and a half to 17, in mediums and wides. Knowing a lot of guys that wear 16s and 17s and 18s 
that's a pretty cool thing because those guys have a really hard time finding shoes and boots. So having a work shoe that's pseudo comfortable, kind of comfortable, not very durable, but at least you're going to feel good. So if you got to buy three of these a year or two of these a year, at least you're going to feel good that whole time. So that's the classic Georgia Giant in brown with a steel toe. Hey, if you've ever worn the Georgia Giant, comment below. Let guys know what you think about this boot. Was it your first work boot? How did it serve you? Whatever, please comment below. Hey, if you want to know more about the Georgia Giant, swing by to bootguy.com. There I'll have some detailed photos, and I'll also have a couple of links if you're interested in picking a pair up for yourself. Please don't forget to hit my subscribe button below. It really helps out. And if you're about to buy a pair of boots, whether it's a Georgia Giant in an extra size or a lower size, or just any boot in general. If you got some questions, shoot me over an email. Until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.